love my channel and would like to show your support, please click on the link below this video and become the patron of the Oshanka Show. For as little as one dollar, you can help us grow and create the new interesting videos about the life in Soviet Union. Hello comrades and welcome back to Shanka Show. Today we're going to continue our conversation about medical service in Soviet Union and more exactly in Kiev, Ukraine, because that's where I lived for over 20 years. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video, uh, I went uh, to polyclinic uh, quite often when I was a kid to take care at least of my teeth. And so we had a t several types of medical facilities. We had hospitals, it's where you uh, stay, you know, they have beds, they have uh, surgery rooms and all that stuff. So that's a hospital, hospital, or uh, we call it balnitsa. Uh, we also had so-called polikliniki, poliklinika or polyclinics, so like a clinic, but it's a polyclinic, so there's a many doctors of different specialities in the same building so there'll be maybe two three story high building that uh, have doctors covering you know there'll be dentists there and um, uh, people who take care of your ears and uh oculist the one the eye doctor and other types so the one building will be an area that you just go there and uh, then you sit in line uh, waiting for your turn uh, to be uh, checked by a doctor. And that's the thing about my memories of the Soviet polyclinics. We always had to wait in line for hours. So as I mentioned before, nothing is uh, free in this world. Uh, so if you get a medical service which is free of charge, you pay with something else. And we paid in time. You know, I probably spent several years of my life just sitting in line uh, waiting for my turn to see a doctor. And most of the visits were scheduled. So uh, first you need to go to polyclinic and talk to receptionist lady and schedule your appointment. And then you need to show up maybe like 30 minutes prior. And of course, you know, even if they schedule, for example, you know, 10 people for that specific doctor in a day, there's a, always, you know, might take longer or sometimes somebody came to had an urgency, so they let them go ahead of the line. So we end up sitting at least an hour or so uh, just to see your doctor. And for example, every time that I go uh, to see a dentist, if you need a fill-in, then you need to have appointment and uh, wait in line. But if you just need to pull your tooth out, then it's called uh, that you arrive paskorai, uh, just like a speed service. So they'll let you just go ahead of the other people. So you wait. Uh, so the doctor, will, uh, dentist will finish uh, filling someone's tooth. Then they will let you go in. He quickly yank it, uh, your tooth out and you're done. And the next person that sits for an hour uh, to get his fill in. So that's what I remember. Uh, we come in to the dentist and there'll be a line of people. We tell them, hey, we Pascore, we just, uh, for this fr uh, fast service, get your tooth uh, pulled out and you leave. So back when I was a very small kid and I was back in the village, uh, I had experience in really strange uh, medical treatment. I can't really call it a medical treatment. Uh, we had, or probably we still have, old ladies that being called uh, Sheptunia, or Whisperer. And those ladies, apparently, they know special prayers that they will whisper in the uh, person's ear. And that specific prayer, you know, they have, you, they have a specific prayers for specific problems. So they whisper that prayer in your ear, and it should take care of your problem. And I know it sounds ridiculous, uh, but let me tell you the story what happened to me. So I was maybe four or five years old because I remember this. Um, I don't remember exactly what happened, but uh, my mom said that uh, some dog like really startled me. And there is this thing they call that you, if you get startled really bad, you get a spook. Uh, so you got this scare. 
And what happened to me that I couldn't eat. Every time I eat, I will uh, puke. And it lasted for several days that every meal I eat, you know, I will just uh, had to puke it out. And my grandma figured out that probably I have so-called scare, is poog. And, of course, there is no pills <laughs> against scare. Uh, but we had this old lady living in our village that uh, she won't take the money, uh, but you bring her little presents, like you bring some dozen of eggs or some meat or whatever you have. Um, so my grandma took it to her. And it's funny that I, I still remember this. So this old uh, log cabin, like most people had in the village. And so she talked to this lady, my grandma did, and uh, gave her the presents. And then the grandma stayed outside, and the lady took me inside of the, her house, uh, sat me on a chair, and then she started whispering something in my ear. Um, after she was done... Uh, I would come out and I look at my grandma. I said, Ma and Grandma, I'm very, very hungry. And from that day, I didn't have issues with eating. I didn't have any eating disorders anymore. I could eat. I became a healthy kid again. So I'm not a really superstitious person, but I definitely had that experience. And it makes me wonder what the hell was going on. But uh, this is what happened. The lady, the whisperer, uh, healed me from scare and when I was a little kid. And there were other things that the, the whisper ladies could take care of. For example, we had so-called glass. So if somebody really envy about, uh, about your achievements or just general about you, uh, some people have this bad energy that they glass it, they we call it. So you get like a bad eye on you. And then your things will be bad or you have a bad health issues or just something will be wrong with you all the time, usually with your health. And uh, you need to go to this whisper lady and she will can kind of feel it, what's wrong with you, and they have, she will have a special prayer to take care of it. So I'm not sure how those things work, but as I said, I had a scare and it took care of, of me. So that was uh, one of the strange healing experiences that I had when I was a kid back in the Soviet Union. Okay, now I have another story for you, but uh, I want to warn you right away. If you're eating right now, you might want to stop, or if you have a sensitive stomach, or you might want to just skip this video because for the next couple of minutes, I have another <laughs> good story for you guys. So I was probably about six or seven years old. Uh, this thing happened in Kiev. I had issues with my tonsils. Uh, in Russian, we call it glande. And uh, they swollen, they were really bad. Uh, they're hurting and they were like big in size, kind of black in my throat. And usually you just go uh, for the quick surgery and they just snap them out and remove them. My mom wasn't really big fan of that idea. Um, she thought that it affects, especially young boys, if you remove early the tonsils, it just it can affect them as the you know as they grow up. So when she went to the doctor. And, you know, doctor is just like, yeah, they need to be removed. My mom uh, expressed her concerns about these removal things. And this doctor, this lady, uh, she said something really interesting. She actually told my mother, like, you never heard this from me. I just want to mention that I, uh, one of my patients, some lady told me that there's one more option, another option to uh, take care of the bad tonsils um, is to make your kid drink his own urine. And she said, I know it sounds gross and sounds weird, but I was told that it take it can help. So if you really, really don't want your kid uh, to have tonsils removed, you can give it a try. And if it doesn't work, then we just uh, schedule you for surgery. Uh, so my mom, uh, she tricked me. One day she told me that I need to have some uh, samples done from my urine. And I, in my previous video I already mentioned that, that we used, you know, mayonnaise jars. Uh, so she collected my uh, piss one day. And a day or so later, she made me drink it, telling me that she got new medicine. And so she warmed it up 
and she made me drink it, and I thought it was disgusting test in medicine, but she made it drink a couple times that day, and guess what? My tonsils healed. They swollen disappeared, uh, irritation disappeared, and I never had them removed. So this is another strange experience I had when I was a kid uh, about healing. So how's everyone is doing? I hope uh, you guys have strong stomachs and uh, you deal okay with my video today. I apologize, but I decided, you know what? I just gonna tell you that story, but I think it's pretty amazing. Um, another thing about the medical service in Soviet Union, we did a lot of so-called samolichenia or like uh, self-healing that uh, doctors didn't prescribe a lot of antibiotics when I was a kid. Uh, there was only one time uh, that I recall that I had a really bad bronchitis and uh, it was like go going to become a pneumonia, like develop from bronchitis into pneumonia. So then they subscribed uh, antibiotics and I don't think we had it in a pill form. It was only shots. So I had a nurse come into our apartment uh, every day and she will give me a shot and using your buttocks and it was maybe like f for a week or so maybe she came twice a, uh, twice a day because um, I remember she was asking me like do you remember which side did I um, give you a shot before and I was just so in pain from this constant needle poking in my butt so I was like almost crying I was like I don't know the both sides are hurt so bad you ma'am please just just poke any side right now because I really don't care. So this is when I was, remember being treated with antibiotics. Otherwise, if you have a cold, you know, you have a cough or um, your nose is stuffy, uh, people a lot of times just did it uh, like natural remedies. We, we drink uh, a lot of teas. So if you have a cold, um, you don't use sugar, you use honey, but, you know, thinking about it, it's still sugar. Uh, like we do a lot of, um, you make a tea uh, with raspberry jelly, like homemade uh, raspberry jelly. You just uh, heat up water really hot, uh, add some uh, raspberry jelly in it and mix it up and then some honey and you drink it really hot. You're supposed to drink it really, really hot. Another good tea would be like made out of cranberries. Uh, it's really sour, a really tart tea. Uh, another popular uh, berries was a black currant uh, berry. That was uh, also really good, but you, of course you have to drink it really hot. And that's one of the dis disappointing thing that I discovered here in America that in America you don't really have a black currant. Uh, it's a different story, but since early 30s of uh, last century, all the black currant was uh, destroyed in America because it was some uh, blight affecting white pines in the northern states and the black currant bushes were outlawed. The other things that uh, people um, used uh, to take care of their cold was this really horrible, horrible things called garchichnik, mustard plasters. So you could purchase in any drugstore, apteka, we call it. It's a piece of paper which they had a mustard seed uh, paste applied and you buy them a package of 10 I believe and actually I have uh, one I bought from Ukraine now it's made in China of course but if I'll find it um, what I'm planning to do I'm gonna actually make a video and apply it on myself and we'll see how it looks but if I have a really bad cold uh, that's what mom will do uh, she will have a small plastic like flat container full of hot water and then you, you know, you take your t-shirt off and um, so you, you lay on your stomach and she will dip each uh, uh, the piece of paper or mustard paste on it in this water and it activates the mustard paste. Then she applies it to your skin. So you will have on your back maybe six of them. And then she'll put uh, like a wax paper on top uh, so you won't get uh, your sheets wet and maybe a towel. Then she gently turns you upside, uh, turns you around. So now you lay on your back, applying your weight on the master uh, 
those pieces of paper. Then she applies on your chest, same thing. And guys, I'm telling you, this is one of the most horrible tortures you can experience is this burn from the mustard paste on your skin. And usually you have to keep them on you for about 30 minutes. So my mom will start the timer, or keep an eye on a watch. And I was begging her uh, to read a book for me because, you know, you just lay in your room and it's really like your chest and your back is on fire. It burns so bad. You're almost ready to cry. And I honestly have no idea why it worked, but it would help you with your cough uh, to have this mustard uh, paste burn your skin. And then after 30 minutes, my mom says, okay, you're fine now. She will remove those uh, pieces of paper and your skin will have the shape of this mustard plasters for a day or so. It's kind of like brings the skin up to the upper layer. So you have like, it looks like little burns, but it will help with your cough. So as I said, we didn't use my, a lot of antibiotics, but all my childhood, every winter, I remember suffering because at least I'll get, you know, bad cough maybe once or twice during the winter. And that means that my mom will apply this mustard plasters, this garchichniki, and uh, it was horrible. Another way is so-called bunky, or I looked up uh, for the proper translation, it's called copping therapy. So there's glass cups uh, and you apply in your back same way as you apply garchichnik. Uh, but what you do, my mom will have a, you know, you need to have a flame. So you quickly uh, put the stick with the burning, uh, should use like a rubbing alcohol and dip uh, uh, like a fabric or something that lit on fire and you apply that flames inside of the cup and it burns the oxygen out of it then you quickly apply on the skin so at that moment you have vacuum inside of the cup and you apply it onto your back and what it happens then since there's a vacuum inside of the cup it starts sucking your skin stretching skin and suck inside of the cup so it looks really weird uh, when you look at the person i never seen anyone else with the cops on their backs but the good thing was it wasn't hurting at all they just sit on your back and then it's that's kind of similar effect as a garchichnik it brings the blood to the upper uh, layers of your skin and actually after the cops being removed you have like round perfect round shape like cookie cutter shape bruises on your skin it's a little bit dark red Spot, uh, spots right where the cups were so your back will look really ugly for several days or a week but supposedly it also helped with your cough uh, when I started looking up on the internet it was uh, a lot of things were saying like no it actually doesn't but uh, we used it a lot when I was a kid but my mom preferred unfortunately uh, garchichnik those master paste sheets and, and they were really painful uh, glass cups, the scoping therapy was way easier. Uh, but maybe my mom decided what they were, it wasn't as effective as the garchichnik, so I was always suffering under garchichniki. Another thing I did a lot when I had really bad runny nose or stuffy nose is will be, uh, I'll go in the kitchen and my mom set up little, um, uh, like a thing on the fire you know she we had a gas stove uh, so she'll put little bowl like not a bowl like you know a metal thing full of water and then she adds salt and baking soda to it and then she covers it up so there's a little uh, hole that steam will be coming out when the water starts boiling and then you sit there you cover your head uh, with a towel so you're trying to kind of catch all that steam and you sit for 30 minutes and you breathe through the nose that steam with baking soda and salt and it will help like it warms you up your face a lot and you sweaty and you red uh, but it will uh, make you feel better like it will kind of makes the you can breathe through your nose again but of course again you in this, this little steamy like room under a towel for 30 minutes breathing hot steam 
So of course it, it was quite painful experience too. Another thing I did a lot uh, when I had a cold, this is when you have a bad throat, and when your throat hurts, it's the same thing. You have a really hot water, and you add salt and baking soda, and you gargle it. And you gargle it as long as you could, so trying for at least 20 seconds, and it's also will kind of soothe your throat. But of course, it's really hard. Let me try it. Like that, you'll be doing it for, you know, 20 seconds till you're out of breath. And of course, it's also, you need to have water as hot as you can handle it. And it's really salty, plus baking soda, so it tastes really bad. But that was another way how we took care of our colds instead of uh, just using antibiotics like here in America. And one more thing that we did, uh, when you have stuffy nose, they can't breathe through it. Uh, people, a lot of people back home, they uh, had aloe plant. I think, I hope I said it correctly. It's A-L-O-E plant. So we actually had plants uh, in your house. And what you do, you just cut one of those funky uh, cactus looking uh, leaves and you squeeze this juice out of it. Now that juice, then you need to have them like uh, drop those, apply the aloe drops right in your nose. And for some reason it irritates it so much, it will make you sneeze nonstop, maybe for 10, 15 minutes. You just basically, you stay in the bathroom and you'll be sneezing and sneezing and sneezing so hard and of course, all the stuff will be coming out of your nose and your mouth. So you want to stay in the bathroom right there next to the sink. Uh, sometimes you can get headache just because you sneeze so much. But it's also would help you with your nose condition. I, of course, I hate it a lot because I'll, I'll always get a headache. Because if you sneeze nonstop for 10, 15 minutes, it, it starts hurting. But that was another thing we did a lot is aloe juice uh, applied right inside of your nose. Just kind of have so-called pipetka, I'm not sure how we call it, say it on English, but this little uh, glass vial with the little rubbery tip that you create a little vacuum, you suck inside and then you do some drops inside of your nose. So that's the things that uh, Soviet people did um, uh, to take care of their colds. I hope you enjoyed this story. It just brought a bunch of memories to, to me. Now it's I'm not a big fan how everything is just antibiotics here in America. You know, as long as when a kid starts coughing or whatever and he has a cold, you go to a doctor and I was like, I'm just wasting my time and my money because I know all they're going to do is just say, okay, uh, there is your receipt, go get some amoxicillin and this is it. That I had only once in my uh, 20 years here in America when a, a doctor said, well, it's not bad yet. So you can try some natural remedies, but just in case, I'll write you a prescription uh, with saying Russian recept. So I'll write you a prescription for antibiotics, but you're still not that bad that you might be able to skip it. And I really appreciated that because otherwise, 99% of the time, doctor was just, oh yeah, you have a bad cough, there's a prescription, go get some antibiotics. It's like, oh my God, why is it always antibiotics? Can we just have some uh, better ways of healing ourselves without applying these antibiotics every single time. Uh, so this is my story about uh, medical services in Soviet Union and how the Soviet people took care of themselves. I hope you enjoy the show. As always, uh, don't forget to put the like under this video, share with your friends, uh, share on in the social media, and if you can, uh, please support my channel through patreon.com or you can just drop some money through PayPal. YouTube still blocking about 15 to 20 percent of my videos for no reasons as far as I can see, but a lot of my videos are blocked from monetization and um, that really sucks. But anyway, uh, you guys have a great day. We'll talk to you later. До свидания.